Right, let's talk about the future of Xbox. <laughs> Last year when Quantum Break was released, I made a video in which I talked about the future of the Xbox brand, and at the time Quantum Break was the first title to offer the Play Anywhere feature. And for those of you who don't know, the Play Anywhere feature it allows gamers to purchase games on either the Xbox or PC and to play on both systems with just one purchase. It caused a lot of consternation at the time with some people in the uh, Xbox community suggesting that the Xbox was done. Since then we've had more Play Anywhere titles such as Gears of War, Forza Horizon 3 and, um, yeah, well, Recall. And we've got Sea of Thieves, State of Decay 2 and Crackdown 3 on the way as well. Halo Wars, which you would think is going to be a Play Anywhere title, isn't, unfortunately, it would seem. But it has had varied success, with Gears of War being pretty much the poster boy in terms of how it should be done. Well, Recall had some serious loading issues on the Xbox, and Quantum Break was frankly a bloody mess uh, on PC. It was fine on Xbox, but rubbish on PC. Overall, though, I do think the point I made in my earlier video that this was a hint towards the future of Xbox stands. And I think with third party developers coming on board, or at least the hint that they might come on board, with Capcom offering Play Anywhere with Resident Evil 7, we might be starting to see this roll out on a larger scale. And I certainly hope so. But of course, there's also been disappointments uh, with Capcom's Dead Rising, which was a perfect candidate for Play Anywhere, turning out to not actually come to Play Anywhere, which was a pain in the backside. And that led people to accuse Microsoft of backtracking on their Play Anywhere promise, uh, which wasn't exactly true because Dead Rising 4 was never actually listed as a Play Anywhere title, even though it was kind of hinted at. And then, of course, we had Scalebound, which was arguably one of Xbox's biggest titles this year, being cancelled entirely. And that was a Play Anywhere title as well. So that was a bit of a dent to the plans. And surprisingly, <laughs> again, the doom and gloom merchants crawled out of their caves and declared the end of Xbox. A bit prematurely, I think. However, if you look at Xbox games and the lineup for this year, it does look a little bit sparse especially when you compare it to the PS4, and that could also be a cause of concern, especially with the Scorpio coming later this year. A new console is only as good as the games it offers, and that's one reason why the Switch looks so poor at present. But that brings me to Digital Foundry and the leaked white paper on the Scorpio. In this white paper, a lot of technical information came to the fore about the Scorpio and the way it would handle graphics. The most significant part in terms of what I'm looking at here, though, is where it talks about upscaling to 4K and using techniques such as sparse rendering, which is another name for checkerboard rendering. And we've come across that before with the PS4 Pro and all the hoo-ha around that. The reason it's significant, though, is that up until now, many people had assumed that the Scorpio was going to be a 4K box and that was a bit of a disappointment because people were expecting it to be 4K across the board. In part because, well, Microsoft said it would be back at E3 last year. They did a bit of hasty backtracking on that one, but that's what they said initially. So again, people lost their shit saying that Microsoft had lied and that it showed that the Scorpio wasn't as powerful as Microsoft said it would be and uh, doom and gloom again. However, again, those of us paying attention noted even back as far as E3 that the Scorpio may not have the power to handle all games natively in 4K, certainly not above 30 frames per second. I've got a GeForce 1080 in my gaming rig, and even that won't consistently put out 4K. It'll do it in some games, but there's usually a trade-off with frame rate. And also, many of the rendering techniques that are used for the PS4 Pro and that look like they will be used with the Scorpio were also used in PC gaming too. They're just methods to get the best out of the available resources. And while we should be a little bit irritated with Microsoft for kind of playing fast and loose, just as Sony played fast and loose, we also have to understand that we're not going to stop having these methods. They're always going to be used because they eke out more from the available resources. And the other thing we have to note is that the Xbox One is far more powerful than the PS4 Pro. 
So if the PS4 Pro can manage to get close to 4K, and it does get close to 4K, and some games are actually in native 4K, not many, but some, if you're using these techniques with 4K on the PS4 Pro, then we can safely assume that the Scorpio is going to get closer to true 4K and will manage it with a lot more games. What the paper and Digital Foundry showed us is that Microsoft are intending to give both developers and gamers choice. And, uh, and uh, we've said this about the PS4, and I know I moaned about the PS4 Pro, but the choice that we got with the PS4 Pro and are continuing to get with the PS4 Pro is a good thing. And that can only be good for the Scorpio as well, especially moving forward and knowing that the Scorpio has this power on tap. And while I think both Sony and Microsoft have been a little disingenuous with the 4K <laughs> nonsense, these options are no bad thing. After all, wouldn't you like to have the choice between 1080p at 60 frames per second or 4K at 30 frames per second? Wouldn't you like to be able to choose between 1080p 60 online and 4K 30 offline? Isn't that a good idea? Isn't that a good choice? You know, I am pissed off at Microsoft for not being more clear about this from the outset. But I do still think that Scorpio is going to be a bloody monster. The PS4 Pro already offers superior visuals in many games, and the Scorpio does have that extra power on tap. This all shows that the Xbox brand isn't going anywhere. Certainly not if Microsoft have got anything to do with it. With Play Anywhere and the Scorpio, Microsoft is showing us two strands of an ongoing strategy, and that's a strategy that I think goes right back to the original Xbox. They've lost their way somewhat along the way, but, you know, in terms of their hardware aspirations and how they want to see games consumed, I do think there is a strategy there. You know, they've had a massive turnaround since the launch of the Xbox One, both in terms of strategy and their fortunes. They still are massively behind Sony when it comes to sales. But I do think we can see real glimpses of their long game here. If you add in backwards compatibility, then I think the picture becomes even clearer still. And in fact, I wouldn't be at all surprised to see original Xbox games appear on the system at some time, well, in the near future. If you listen carefully, Phil Spencer has compared games to other media, and specifically music. He said he wants us to be able to play our games across devices in much the same way, without generational or hardware barriers to our enjoyment. The trouble there is that gamers don't seem to like that. And, you know, it's because it does away with the traditional console and with generational cycles. And God forbid we wouldn't want to do away with the generational cycle, would we? Or would we? Being able to go out and buy an Xbox, any Xbox moving forward, and play any game that's been released for the system over the last 10 years or moving forward, you know, 15 years into the future, that is a positive, isn't it? That's a win-win. In the short term, the cancellation of Scalebound and the issues with Dead Rising not being a cross-play title might suggest that Microsoft are backtracking or that they're changing their policies. And even the white paper on the Scorpio, you know, might have suggested that. But I don't think they're as interested in the short term or even the medium term as they are in the long term. And I think that from that point of view, the future does look promising for Xbox gamers. Certainly as long as Phil Spencer's in charge anyway. The biggest worry for me is just how fast Microsoft are prepared to change tack when they think things aren't working out. And the plus side of that is if you look at the way they move things around after the initial release of the Xbox One, and when they realised that people were getting pissed off with them, they changed things rapidly. They sacked people, they restructured, and things improved. They brought Phil Spencer in, and things have started to get better since then. The flip side of that is obviously the cancellation of Scalebound and how quickly they were able to move on that. Once they made up their mind that they were cancelling, bang, done, gone. The good thing about that is they are able to move quickly. The bad thing is that if they start moving in the wrong direction, they could move in the wrong direction very quickly as well. So while they've got this long-term strategy in place, if the management structure changes or you know the people at the top decide that that's not where they want to be going anymore, then they could change tack. Let's hope not, because I do think that for the time being, Microsoft look like they're heading in the right direction and long may it continue.
that's what I think anyway. Uh, I, I don't know what you guys think. Come in the comments and tell me what you think. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? If you disagree with me, that's fine. But do come in and tell me why. You know, don't just come in and call me an idiot or whatever. Tell me why you think I'm talking rubbish and we can have a conversation. And in the meantime, it's getting late now, so I'm going to go and get myself a cup of tea. You would not believe how many times I've tried to record this video. And I'll speak to you in the next one. Bye.